one of the things before I get into a lot of the products, this is something that I think is really important. It's something that I think is forgotten about a lot with print on demand stores in general. You just had a successful Valentine's Day. You just had a successful Mother's Day. You got Christmas, right? It's seven months off. What are you going to do till then? How are you going to make sure that you can find sales and you can find revenue? How can you make sure that you're going to be set up when we get to Q4 so that you can maximize Q4? And I really think this is the time that everybody should take some of their time and their effort and put it into brand building. This is the best time of year to focus on making sure you have a solid brand and you're going to build a brand with products within multiple niches. You know, you don't go to the, the gift card store and they just have birthday. No, they have tons of different niches when you go to the gift card store. I'm going to the gift store. I don't just want to be able to buy stuff for my mom. I want to be able to buy stuff for everyone. And this is what you need to think about is where is your store? Have you done what's needed to have a robust store, right? You all also need to think about your branding and your image. Have you solidified your brand? who you are, who you're projecting yourself to be to your customers. And then also like focus on spreading your web, right? Like, Cause right now you've got a really good web, right? It's nice and compact. But when Q4 comes, there's a lot of flies coming. And if you make a nice big web, you're gonna catch a lot of those flies. So thinking about new sales channels, like have you figured out how to set up some Google? Have you made sure that you're maybe running some TikTok ads or have you tried any of that other stuff? Now's a great time to get in, get familiar and learn it. So then when Q4 comes, you are set and you are ready to go. New niches and new products, right? You might only be selling jewelry. You're hitting Father's Day and you're going, I don't have any men's stuff in my store. Make sure you have men's stuff. If, if you have only women's stuff, there's a lot of times someone's going to come to buy something and they're want to, they're going to want to explore the rest of your store. If you don't have this product they want to shop for, you've missed out on, on easy revenue. So having a nice broad store is something super important. And when it comes to building your store, so I, I've, I've managed e-commerce stores. I think one store I had had 700,000 SKUs on it right? It was huge. And when you think about your store's navigation, we spent a lot of time thinking about the logic of our navigation. Is it intuitive? Does it make sense? Is it where people start? So this was a store and we sold headwear, right? So hats. And you know, you could come in and you could go, or do you want men's hats or women's hats, right? Problem was like 90% of the hats were men's and women hats. We said, well, that's a horrible way of separating them because it hasn't narrowed down the field enough. So we spent a lot of time looking at things and playing things, and we ended up switching the navigation to be style of hat. So you had fedora, and you had flat cap, and you had sun hat, and you had visor and baseball hat. And it turned out that when people were coming to shop for a hat, the first thing they said is, I want a baseball hat. They could click baseball hat. Boom, they're right where they needed to be. So this is that time to think about, is my navigation supporting how people are, might come to my store and shop. And when it comes to gifting, generally, the way people are going to look, the thing they're going to look for first is who's the recipient, right? Is it for a husband? Is it for a son? Is it for a daughter? Is it for a mom, a grandma? Those types of things can really help narrow down the field quickly. Now, do I say only do that? No, I think one drop down should be recipient, right? Or call it whatever you want, but recipient, right? The other one, could be occasion, right? Birthday, anniversary, Halloween, whatever, right? Maybe not Halloween for, for jewelry, but still think about the ways people are going to come and shop for your store and make sure you've set that navigation up correctly. And then do you have solid branding? Remember, if you look at how many impressions your ad gets, that's a really, really big number. A lot of people see your ad. I do it all the time. I'm scrolling. I see an ad and I go, oh, that's really cool. Take note of the brand name, but I, I need to, I'm just trying to find what my friend said earlier, right? Is your brand strong enough that someone scrolling is going to be able to remember your website so that they can go and search it later and find your store? Does the image for your Facebook account match? Is it your, you know, like all of that stuff needs to be cohesive, simple, easy, and, and it needs to make a lot of sense because there's a, I, I see a, a lot, you know, I run a lot of Facebook ads and then 30% of our, my sales come from Google. It's not because they just happen to search and find me. It's because they saw me on Facebook and they went and searched on Google and then found my website. So you need to make sure that when they pass your ad, your brand sticks. 
and they go, ooh, yes. And then they can go Google it 10 minutes later because they haven't forgotten what your brand is. The next thing is emails. Have you spent the time? Did you, did you just go into Shopify and click, yeah, let's turn on that and turn on that and turn on that? Like go spend some time and take that email, customize it a bit. Make sure the branding in that email matches the branding on the site, which matches the branding you're putting out on social media. Customize all of that. That little you know conversion rate change, if you get an abandoned cart email to convert from 5%, 15%. In Q4, that can be hundreds, if not thousands of dollars extra for you. So take that time. Make sure you have those things set up. Make sure they look good. Test them. You have no idea how many emails I get from stores that say, thanks for your order, your name. They didn't take the time to test their email to notice that they didn't set it up correctly. And now rather than saying, thanks, John, it says, thanks, your name. And they're saying that to every customer. That causes a lot of people to lose trust. So take the time, test your emails, make sure they work. All right, the last couple things I want to talk about with brand building is, is your purchase flow set up fully? Is your product page set up right? Do you have the right info where it needs to be? Do you have reviews on every product? How is your description? Is it work? Is it, is it good? Does it say the things it needs to say? And what about your on-page upsells? Do you have gift wrap on? If you don't, I talked about this earlier, go turn gift wrap on, right? How's your checkout? Is it simple? Does it work? Do you have some trust badges? Do you have the payment methods that are needed? I'm in Europe, specifically in the Netherlands. In the Netherlands, we pay using Ideal. If I went to a website that's based in the Netherlands and they don't have Ideal, most likely I'm leaving that website because it doesn't seem like it's really a Dutch website because Dutch websites all have Ideal. 99% of transactions in the Netherlands happen via Ideal. It's a bank transfer system. If you open a store in the Netherlands and don't have that, you lose complete trust. It's like that everywhere you know if you don't have paypal available maybe you should make paypal available you know apple pay things like that you can add those to your stores and there might be people that are abandoning their cart because they don't have the payment method they're used to using or they feel comfortable with so you might not know until you turn it on what you're missing out on and then the last thing is post purchase do you have the right products being shown as upsell are those products even in your store like i said earlier if you have all women's products what are you upselling? Why not upsell a men's product, right? You know, it's Father's Day. Like you gotta make sure you have that. What gaps are missing? Go create some products and fill those gaps so that you can make sure that every single product on your store has a post-purchase upsell flow. You can set up one flow for everything, fine, but this is the time to take that, take that extra moment and think about who is buying this product. What are they most likely to buy next? This is husband buying for wife for anniversary. They've been married multiple years. The likelihood that they have kids is pretty high. Upsell some kids products, maybe a daughter's product. Oh, you said no, hires a son's product. Think about the logic of who your customer is and what's going to convert the best and set up those flows so that they are good to go. All right, done talking about brand building. Let's jump over and talk about what products are selling specifically at this time of year in 2023. And the big trend that we are seeing is hyper personalization. You're going to hear me, you're going to hear Michael. And if you were in our meetings, you would hear us both constantly saying this phrase hyper personalization. And this what it really breaks down to is allowing the buyer to personalize and customize the product just for them or for their recipient in any way that you want to do that. Um, and and I'm calling this out very specifically because I get this argument a lot. Yes, this can be a double-edged sword, right? Which is why we talked about brand building, right? It can be a double-edged sword because generally speaking, the more options or choices you give to the buyer, the lower your conversion rate because you're giving them more obstacles to purchase, right? However, however, personalization is very different than just variants or options. The right personalizations actually make the process that's fun and they keep the buyer engaged and wanting to engage. There's nothing better than doing a buyer upload and then getting shown that version of your product with your picture on it and going, wow, that looks amazing. I need to buy it, right? If you do personalizations correct, they can actually increase your conversion rate. So again, do what you want with it, but I'm going to show you ways to personalize any product in our catalog. So you can, you can go with products that have zero options and just have a customization and you can go with products that have tons of customization options. It all comes down to you and the, the product that you're choosing to sell. And when I talk
talk about some basic hyper personalization, I'm gonna show you these three products, right? You have the baby feet. They get a custom name on each baby foot, as well as a custom birthstone on the big toe of each baby foot. You can buy it in silver and gold. It can come with a standard or a luxury box, and you can put upsells like gift wrap on there. Lots and lots of product options here. A lot of you are saying, well, that's gonna make it hard to have you know good sales. You're wrong. You're a hundred percent wrong. We have a seller that the week before Mother's Day sold over two thousand of these in one week. But you tell me their conversion rate was that? I guess their conversion rate was really good if they're selling two thousand of these. I'm sure, most of you would have loved to have two thousand sales in seven days. And they did it on a product that has the most options of any product we've ever sold. Right? Personalizations aren't in hindrance to buying. They actually encourage buying. So keep that in mind. The name necklaces, right? Be it with a heart, be it with a pop print, be it in whatever script you want, you get to type someone's name in. And that definitely helps with converting. And it is a personalization. If you buy this for someone, they know that you went in and typed their name in and they got it, right? You didn't just go buy this off the shelf. It was made for them. It makes the gift have an inherently higher value because it was made and personalized just for them. So keep that in mind. And then obviously the buyer upload, bangle, necklace, keychain. This just connects with people. You know, I, I, I have a wife and we've got a daughter and I know if she saw a picture of our daughter on there, she would go all absolutely nuts for it. And if I gave this to my mom and it had a picture of her granddaughter on there, she'd go absolutely nuts. It adds so much more valuable, so much more value to a product when it's personalized. Not only does it make the recipient like it more, but it also generally means that you can charge more for this because it's a personalized product. And because it's one off, it's made just for them. It's an inherently higher value than just a basic piece of jewelry. So do keep that in mind because why not try? I mean, if you talk to like Gary, he'll tell you, he looks at the, the prices that we tell him to sell it. And he generally raises every one of them uh, because he knows he can sell it for more money and he does and he does not have any issues doing it. So, so just keep that in mind. And then like, like I said, how to make these products work. Cause like we said, lots of options can cause friction in the buying process, right? Pay attention to the customer experience. If you launch this product and you don't go to your product page and walk through it and make sure everything's working and make sure it looks good. Make sure that you have the information in the description that says maybe like, hey, step one, select how many feet you want. Step two, enter the uh, engraving. Step three, select your birth zones. However it works, you can add that stuff in there and make sure that it's clear and it's concise and it tells them what they need to be doing so they can purchase the product. Also, showing multiple options in the photos so they can see something that might connect with them. Uh, it's like with buyer upload. If you're selling buyer upload and it's it's mother uh, or it's daughter to mother and the image that you're using has a marine on it it's that's not gonna work right customize it and make sure it fits your niche make sure it's a picture of a little girl on there right you're selling mom, you know, daughter to mother, right? Like that's what they're gonna put is a little picture of them when they were a kid on there and give it to their mom. Make sure that, you know, the what you're showing on this page supports the entire buying process. If you're, if it's Father's Day and you wanna sell the dog tag and you want people to be able, it, you're going for the new dad niche and so this is pictures of ultrasounds on there, right? If they land on that page and it's a picture of a grandma in that dog tag, it's not gonna connect with, but if it's a picture of an ultrasound, they're going to go, oh, and they're going to grab that ultrasound and they're going to put it in there and they're going to know exactly what it should look like. And they're going to be able to, it's just going to make the process actually easier rather than harder. It removes friction and actually almost like adds a lubricant to it. And then I, I always say, just make it fun. Make it fun. Why wouldn't you make it fun? Have fun with it. People are there to customize. The they're coming to customize that product because they're excited about it. So keep that excitement flowing, you know, make sure that they're having that fun with it. I already talked about this, make sure the product description expresses the fun. It also expresses the steps that they need to do. And then really talk up the one of a kind gift, right? This is made just for you, right? Don't go, 
it's custom made. They, it's made just for you, right? There's a very big, yes, they say the same thing, but one of them is gonna get me really excited on the inside and one is just like a fact, right? So make sure you're backing up what you're saying with the right type of language. It, it makes it go, oh my God, they're gonna love it. It's made just for them, right? Oh, it's one of a kind. Use those phrases that are gonna connect with your buyer. Now, I love this. I have a daughter. I also got a dog, right? And if you ask me how many kids I have, I say two. Got a 14-year-old named Tank, and I've got a five-year-old named Esme, right? Pets are the new kids. They are. People love their pets and they've become an integral part of family life, right? Like I said, you ask me how many kids I have, I have two. My dog is considered part of my family. He's part of, like, I spend a lot of money on my dog. On We like to dress him up. We like to give him toys he doesn't play with. He's got a heating blanket because we live in Amsterdam and what dog doesn't need a heating blanket, right? Like, these are the types of things pet owners do. We spend a lot of money. And this isn't a fact I love to throw out, but pet lifetimes are a lot shorter than people, right? So there's a lot more space for that pet memorial area. And I know that sounds kind of grim, but in actuality, a person's a lot more likely to have multiple pets during their lifetime than multiple like dad, right? So there's definitely an area in there where people have more pets die than people in their family. I guess it's like, the, the I don't know how to say this correctly, but hopefully you guys all get what I'm saying here. I'm not trying to be brash or anything thing but you, you'll have more opportunity for this people have a lot of pets there's people that have a, a like nine cats i don't i have one dog but there's people and i bet you they go through cats faster than you know most people go through other things there's a lot of room in there for that memorial need and i'm showing you something here this is a page out of our marketing playbook this is something new your marketing team here at shine on is developing and i'm actually going to share a link later not yet because if i share it now you're all going to leave and you're not going to come back. I'm going to force you to stick around to the end of this so that you get the link to this. Uh, you're going to see another one here in a minute. But this is just one page out of our marketing playbook for the paw print necklace, right? And in this, we talk about what we're targeting when we launched this product and when we grew it to a successful, profitable product, right? We were targeting age range of 25 to 45, kind of a younger crowd. They're the ones who spend a lot of money on their pet, primarily female, but male buyers are also gift givers. But this necklace is more for women, but you can buy this for yourself and you can buy it as a gift. So don't forget about men. Relationship, generally in a relationship makes the most sense. If someone's buying a gift, there is the friendship niche, but it's up to you. You can kind of expand it. And then life events, anniversaries, birthdays, special occasions, involving pets, right? My my dog last year, we had a, a, or what was it, a year and a half ago, whatever it was, when he turned 13, he had a bark mitzvah, right? People do weird things with pets. There's a great, there's a great way that you can really tie in giving pet related gifts to people because you don't give them to the dog necessarily, right? And, and if you have a pet die, I think like the memorial niche is huge in, in this. So it's definitely something to keep in mind. But I'm sure all of you know someone out there that they are attached at the hip with their dog and they would wear this necklace in a heartbeat. So keep it in mind. Now, another type of hyper personalization that I like to talk about can be used on your standard products like your love knot, your alluring beauty, forever love. And this is personalizations on the message card. You can see here, it says to my beautiful wife, I don't need the whole world to love me. I just need that one person. And I'm proud to say that special person is you. Love your husband. And I say, no, love John, right? Why not? Do you think my wife is going to get more excited by getting something generic? Or is she going to get more excited that she knows I put the thought into this and it now has my name on the bottom? And she might think I might went and I wrote this cool thing. I didn't, but I did know how to type my name and I typed my name in there. And guess what? That gives me a lot of brownie points because it shows some effort. Not much, but it shows some. Things like this work really, really well. I really like it with grandparents. Like I said, I've got a daughter and that my daughter has four grandparents, right? And they can't all be grandpa and grandma, right? So we have grandpa, we also have papa, and then we have Lulu and Ellie. So if it just says love grandma, when my daughter opens it, she's gonna go, who's grandma? I don't have, I don't know anyone named grandma. I know Lulu and Ellie. Being able to customize, I'm sure everyone here could name off what their weird name, Oma, Opa, you could go crazy crazy with all the different variations that you have for grandparents, right? And that's where having these types of personalizations can take your product to the next level. And if you notice, I have this big old thing on the side here. Oh, I guess it's right there. Big old thing, upsell it. 
right? You can have a standard product and in the description, you can say, do you want to personalize this card? Come check this out. And you link them to another product where they can personalize it. And it's five bucks more. Doesn't cost you a dime to do it. But you can make five bucks more upselling them being able to personalize the card because to them, they're giving something extra out of it. it means nothing to you, but why not make an extra five bucks, two bucks, whatever you want to do, make some extra money and allow them to type in a name. And if your take rate's 20%, cool. You just made a couple extra bucks on 20% of your order. Why not do it? Um, there's a lot of people that might land there on your product and say, you know, I don't go by grandpa. So just this product isn't going to work for me. I wish I could customize it. They're going to leave. If you have that customization, you might actually end up converting more people because your conversion rate on your standard product might stay the same, but you're going to add in all those extra conversions from your personalized product. Um, you can also lead with the personalized product. You can run ads where it shows how you can customize it. It's a lot you can do with this. So, so keep this in mind when I say like hyper personalization, all I'm saying is give people a way to make this product connect more with them. And if you want to know how you can set up these personalized products, please go check out our group and search through there. There have been tons of videos on how to build these products, how to what apps to use, all of that. So there, we, we've covered this. There's videos out there on how to do all of it. I think the first artwork swapper I did was almost three years ago, and, and that's still on YouTube. And technically, it still all works. So I remember doing this, man, summer of, of 2020. Sounds about right. Yeah, I remember what office we were in. We were in our, our first office after we left that co-working space, and we were getting ready to move into our first warehouse. And I remember sitting there, and we came up with the idea for artwork swapper, and uh, we went nuts with it. So I think we were using an app called Product Personalizer at that time. But there are lots of other apps out there you can use. I think customly, you can use uh, T and Blue. There's a lot of different things that you can use for this. A lot of new things that didn't exist before now exist. So go look to the group. I promise you there's tons of resources on how to do this. And it works really, really well. I'll tell you that last year, 2022, our number one seller merchant did exactly what I just told you to do. And he was he was out selling at one point he was outselling our internal brands by almost devil and that's when i went well what's he doing different i go he's letting people type in what they want to type and i was just like it was like everyone needs to start doing this i highly recommend you do this because it really does help convert well and then again don't forget about the guys right we talked about a lot of jewelry we talked about a lot of women we even talked about some animals but now let's talk about the guy right another area right personalization of product. You know, the acrylic is personalized the acrylic. Gary posted a video of how to do it with customly. Go find it. It's in the group. He walks through exactly how he does it, does it, how how it works on the product page and all of that. It's really simple and it's really, really effective, right? Now the one I have here just says to my dad and says a bunch of stuff about what he is and what he's made up of. But you can have ones where they can fill out the types of things that he is. Or you can have a family tree and you can type in the names or again i don't want to get ahead of myself but this plaque is just a giant message card do whatever you want with it right the bracelets why not take a second to let you know to personalize that message card the product isn't personalized it says love you forever but why not take that card and allow people to put you know, the message we have there doesn't have a, 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 a sender or a gift giver on it, but why not allow to say love John at the bottom or, or love whatever, right? So it's just something to think about. Personalizing that can really help get some more Father's Day sales. And even the dad part, right? There's stepped up dad, there's everything, right? Like you can take all of those versions of dad, there's stepdad, stepped up dad, backup dad, whatever you want to call it. There's all different ways to allow people to customize that because not everyone refers to them as dad some people might say father or papa so you can allow this to become something that will connect with anybody by allowing them to just do little bits of personalization and then obviously you have the product we released it last week it is the customizable cross on the cuban link chain you can engrave that cross it's a great little customization you can put you know happy father's day number one dad there's all sorts of stuff that you can put on there to customize or to allow your buyer to customize that necklace and obviously it comes with a message card so you can also do it on the message card if you want all right and while we're talking about the guys look at this we have already released a marketing playbook on exactly how we sold this leather bracelet we were able to make this bracelet profitable within 
one day, one day we made this bracelet profitable. This marketing playbook is, I, I have a slide here at the very end where you'll get to see it. It's a really easy link to get to. I think you'll all leave once I give it to you. And this is just one of my tactics to force you to stick around. So I can tell Michael that I had the best coffee with Michael ever. But here's a little a little uh, sneak peek of targeting, right? Who did we target for this? Uh, first of all, 25 to 55 years old and, and mainly women because women are the most likely people to be buying gifts. That being said, men also buy gifts, but mainly women are buying gifts. Relationship, they're fathers right? So generally in a relationship, married, engaged, tends to work well. We did this product for Father's Day, but we also just ran it for birthdays and anniversaries and it worked really, really well. It was crazy to think that during a Mother's Day rush, we were able to make a bracelet profitable for men's birthdays, but we were. So it shows you how versatile this product can be. And this marketing playbook is available to you once I tell you where to find it, which I don't think I'm going to tell you yet. But Wait, did you know that there's more than just jewelry out there and in the Shine On catalog? What if there was a product that could work in any niche? What if there was a product with great margin? What if there was a product with the ability to get multiple purchases throughout the year? And what if there was a product that you could build an entire store catalog around. Turns out there is, and it's called the acrylic. I don't know how better to express this, but this is a blank slate that you can do anything with. When you think of print on demand, you generally go to a t-shirt and you think of a t-shirt, this is a blank slate and you can put anything you want on it. Like I said, if you think about t-shirts, if you think about blankets, all those are are blank, slates and that's exactly what this acrylic is and you need to start thinking of it that way you can sell these year round and you can sell them to anyone for any reason any reason i recently had a meeting with my entire marketing team right i brought them together and i explained this to them and i told them guys this product is going to change shine on and i need you guys to to figure it out and they're like well we don't know it's just an acrylic plaque how's this going to change things and i put it to them i said all right, give me a niche. I can't find a niche, a, 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 an acrylic light. In your niche, you win. They tried, oh, Halloween, tons of them for Halloween. What about teachers? Tons of them for teachers. Uh, corporate items, sure, why not put your logo on it, right? Gifts, corporate gifts, why not put happy five years and stick it on someone's desk, right? And then, and then Carlos, some of you might know Carlos, he's big into sports. He goes, pickleball, right? There's no way that there's an, a, a light up acrylic plaque for pickleball. So I went to Etsy and I typed in acrylic LED pickleball. Guess what popped up? A light up sign with a pickle with a paddle in his hand and it said pickleball. I went, you can sell anything with this product and, and anything, right? We've got horses up there at the top. We've got sports. We've got a dog memorial. We've got this Spotify music thing with a buyer upload. You've got just married. You've got a personalized written note. You've got graduation. You've got just a basic motivational sign that says you are beautiful. I, I don't really know that you guys have wrapped your head around that this literally can sell to anyone for any reason that exists. There is this product, you could build a store just using the plaque with the LED light, right? And you could literally set, you could build 5,000 products and you would still have ideas. You could build an entire store with just this one product with different designs and no one's gonna complain and say, these are all the same product. They're gonna go, no, every one of them's so different. You can't think of a reason or, or, or a, a, you can't think of a niche or an occasion or anything that this product can't work for. And, and if, you, if you can't, it's because you're not thinking right. You know, you haven't, thought about how this could work. Uh, like I said, I think I've said this about 20 times. I've got a little five-year-old daughter and in her room, we've got, I think she's up to like three night lights right now because, ooh, well, mainly because they all flash different colors and she just likes watching all the colors change because it's not that cute. But I've been working with, with Jules here in Amsterdam. He runs our facility here in Amsterdam. We've actually been prototyping out. I, I have one that uh, it's got a unicorn on it and it says Esme. And guess what? It's a nightlight for kids. I don't know if any of you guys have kids, but people with kids spend a lot of money on their kids on a lot of very expensive, very useless things. I have hundreds of dollars of Legos that I step on and curse at 
all the time. But I continue to buy those Legos. That's what you do when you have kids. So these nightlight, I just think of it as a nightlight for a kid and how much you could do with that. You could build an entire store with just nightlights for kids. You know, uh, you want to do sports gifts, right? You could do an entire store with just sports gifts, right? Like I said, if you haven't wrapped your head around why this is such a big product, you can go look at any print on demand product that exists and you can take that and you can put it on a plaque. And this product is going to probably have higher margins than any other product in print on demand. So if you have not started, you need to start. This product can carry you all till Q4, let alone be the reason why your Q4 is as big as it is. But you can sell this. You know, I said Halloween, right? Who's getting a lot of sales in, in what is it, September? Not not a lot's going on there. But you could sell Halloween ones, right? You could sell, put a jack-o'-lantern on there, put a witch on there. Like, why not? You can sell it for Thanksgiving. Put this on your table. It could say the Burgesses, right? Who doesn't want to plug that in and put it on their, their little buffet table for Thanksgiving, right? You could even go as far as to put one that says sweet potatoes and one that says the turkey. They could buy multiples to decorate their entire buffet table. The options are so so absolutely endless. It's crazy. Man, one of the things that I really hit on with this is the multi-purchases throughout the year. Jewelry is generally not considered a consumable product. And when you look at these, you're probably not thinking that's a consumable product, but it is a consumable product because I don't know if you guys, I, I always had, I had the neighbor that had the yard sign out in her yard and every month came a new yard sign, right? January, happy 2021. February, happy Valentine's Day. March, happy St. Patrick's Day. April, happy Easter. You can do that with these. If you buy one that says happy Easter, I can then sell you one that says happy Mother's Day. And then I can sell you one that says happy Father's Day. And then one that says happy 4th of July. And then one that says happy whatever happens in August, right? You can literally take this and make almost like a subscription business if you really want it to with this. It The versatility is unmatched at what this product can do. And, and the one big thing, the reason why I'm showing you the plaque in particular, it's got an LED base that's an upsell, right? I mean, they come in you can buy the standard base but wouldn't you rather have this light up base the answer is yeah they all do want that light up base i believe we're at above a 50 percent take rate on taking the upsell if you find me other upsells that have above a 50 percent take rate I, I you're just not gonna find that the the product just it works and and so if you haven't invested the time or you haven't thought about it do it get through father's day and then your head should think about nothing but acrylic here's you go here's your link resources.shineon.com slash playbook we've got our paw print name necklace and we've got our men's bracelet we will be releasing these like a machine gun uh we we've got the template we've got it all set up we just got to do all the testing and learn it all and we are going to be putting these out for every product the goal is every time we launch a new product like we did with this men's bracelet it's going to get launched right along with a playbook playbook that tells you exactly what we did to make it profitable. Do we give you the exact formula? No, but we give you everything you need to know so that you can go and create a product and hopefully skip the first couple days of testing. That's my goal, right? My goal is to get you profitable as fast as possible. And that's what these playbooks are built 